DPI poor people. And this is a, a striking finding. Again, here we're showing the head count and the A. And because MPI is the product, you can see that the, the green bar, which is uh, South Asia, and the beige bar, Sub-Saharan Africa, they have much higher uh, MP MPI head counts and intensities of poverty as well. So we've tried to draw a bit of attention to that. Another question that we have is because the distinctive aspect of MPI is to look at intensity. We were curious um, how head count and intensity of poverty relate. You might think that in countries where there is a very high percentage of people who are poor, perhaps the intensity is lower. Um, unfortunately, and, and quite sadly, this graphic depicts the opposite. So on the bottom axis is the head count, um, with Niger having the highest head count. But what you can see is that on the, the vertical axis is the intensity, and that Niger also has the highest intensity of poverty, um, and that there is a strikingly uniform relationship between them. Myanmar, as I said, um, is missing some variables, but Philippines, Vietnam have an unusually high head count, uh, sorry, high intensity and a low head count. So there are questions both about the pathway of poverty reduction in terms of reducing intensity and head count, which I will comment on later, um, as well as uh, distinctive variations in countries. I think it's Vietnam, not Vietnam. <laughs> um, the other interesting point from here is that the countries are color-coded according to their income category, low income being blue, navy blue, and high income, upper middle income being green. And you can see that the blue countries include um, the high MPI intensity and headcount countries, but they also include some with very low MPI, such as Sri Lanka or Uzbekistan. Um, and so that, in a sense, there is a message of hope um, that countries with low income, again, can have very low MPI poverty. Um, there was a discussion also, in a sense, can we go beyond, because even if the head counts for income and for MPI poverty were to be the same, there's a further question about are they identifying the same people as being poor, income poor and MPI poor? Um, so what we are curious about is if there are some people who are poor by one measure but non-poor by another, then there would be an exclusion or inclusion type one, type two error if you used the other indicator as a targeting mechanism. Um, whereas if there was complete overlap between them, then in a sense you use the easiest measure because they're saying the same thing when it comes to targeting. What's well known is that uh, in cross tabs, um, which one can do very easily, that there are some, over, some discrepancies, um, and that was the motivation for, the, for Europe adopting uh, in June this year a multidimensional measure which had income and a deprivation index and an employment index, um, because these were actually measuring different things for the European population. This is data from India in SS 2004 showing that 62 percent of Ill illiterate adults are not income poor, and 46 percent of income poor adults are not illiterate. So they're these are commonly known, and so our question is going beyond that. What is the disjunction between income and MPI? Unfortunately, as I said, we do not have, for most countries, the data from the same survey. Um, that's not impossible to do, uh, but the data sources that we have did not have them. Um, except for the World Health Survey, again, we are not sure or convinced of the quality of those data. But I'll present one example from Chad in which the income poverty rate was 43% and the MPI, 63. Um, and we might therefore expect all of the 43% of people who are income poor to be MPI poor, right? And then 20 extra percent of people to be MPI poor. And instead, we find the disjunction of 37% of the income poor people are not MPI poor. And, and some other discrepancies between income and MPI in the other direction. So these raise questions for research. They're not answers at this point, but they do point to a need for um, investigating the complementarity and its policy relevance. Um, nearing the end, and then I'll hand over to Mariema, um, we also decomposed within a few countries, and we'll be doing some more. As James said, that's one of the values of this measure. It's particularly important at the national level. Um, so this is a decomposition for Kenya, 
which we decompose both by region and by um, ethnic group. And what you can see is the MPI of Nairobi is about like the DR, Dominican Republic. And the MPI in the northeastern rural area is uh, higher than that of Niger, our poorest country. So there's a great spread even within Kenya. Interesting, Bolivia had a much less spread. Um, and it, so it does vary among countries. We also decomposed India, um, similarly found a spread from 16 to 81 percent of the headcount of MPI poor people, and uh, did a comparison uh, between the states of India and the poorest African countries, um, which I'll present very briefly just to encourage decompositions, particularly for the larger countries. Um, the MPI that we calculated across all countries ranges from 0 to 0.64, is the range of the MPI, uh, Niger being 0.64, Slovenia, Slovakia, 0 at all. Um, so we looked at the midpoint, which is 0.32, and wanted to know um, what countries those were, um, except for Nepal, uh, the 26 countries having an MPI greater than 0.32 were in Africa, um, most of them sub-Saharan Africa plus Somalia. Um, India clearly has a higher, uh, a, a lower MPI rate. Um, however, we wanted, because it's very populous, um, because we were, again, looking at poor people, not at countries, uh, we wanted to uh, decompose India. Again, its population as a country is greater than the population of the 37 African countries, um, Sub-Saharan Africa plus Somalia, that we were taking as a reference group. So we did the same decomposition by state within India, grouping together the eastern states, um, and similarly identified those states which had an MPI of greater than 0.32, um, and its eight states. Um, unfortunately, beginning with West Bengal. Um, so these are the eight states interspersed with the African countries. You can see that the poorest entries remain in Africa. They remain the green ones. However, there's a range of MPI values among the rest. Um, and then we did the population analysis. These are the bubbles with the, the size of the bubble being the size of the state or country. Um, and adding them up found that 421 million people uh, were living in those eight Indian states and 410 million in Africa. This is not to set up any kind of perverse or horrible race, but it's just to drive um, the, the discussion to uh, or within populous countries and to looking at the texture of deprivations. I'm going to run through some of these slides so Mariama has some time. Um, we can decompose every country by rural and urban areas, and we've done that, and the country studies are online for the 104 countries. We decompose it by indicator. We also decompose it by the, the number of dimensions in which, or the percentage of people who are deprived and the, the number of dimensions individually they are deprived in. Um, this is an example between Punjab and HP, Himachal Pradesh and in India. Um, but we do this in order to try to investigate um, the how these multidimensional measures, again, probably improved in the national context can inform policy. So these are two adjacent states, very similar MPIs, but Himachal Pradesh has had a lot of activism on education, so its education deprivation is very low, but its health, therefore, is much higher. We've then done some analyses of the different patterns and, and configurations of deprivations within regions, and using cluster analysis um, types of deprivations and the country groupings they pertain to. Again, this is the start, not the end of a research agenda, trying to think through what is the structure of deprivations and what might be some regular policy responses to different configurations, um, and what can we learn from country studies. Finally, um, looking across time, this is work that Gaston Yalonetsky, Mauricio Apaplaza, and Juan Pablo Campo, you know, FI are doing for 10 countries. Um, we look at Bangladesh, Ethiopia, and Ghana, annualizing because the, the distance between their survey was distinct. Ghana reduced its MPI the most, um, and Ethiopia the least, uh, per year. So uh, the, and then we look and at the changes in the different 10 indicators. And we can see that Ethiopia 
did not make much progress on a number of the indicators, but it did reduce deprivations in water and nutrition, which are the green and pink bars. Bangladesh had some more constant um, addressing of the deprivations and particularly focused on child enrollment and Ghana, which reduced it the most, um, had progress in most indicators except for fluorine. So again, this raises questions as to pathways and sequences of investments um, that drive changes, which are the beginning of an agenda. Yeah? No, no, Mariama will present this section. Uh, yeah, so, it's, so it's, okay. it's fine, let's, so that we don't lose the, the thread of the presentation. Um, we also uh, did some robustness checks because this is a new methodology and this was, this is an international, it was trying to be an internationally comparable index. So we tried to explore and scrutinize as much as we could in the time we had um, uh, the robustness of the measure and we are still working on that. Um, we did essentially four things. First of all, we tri triangulated our results with results from other data sources, such as deprivation in water, in sanitation, etc. Um, secondly, we did robustness, um, we analyzed a bit the robustness with respect to the cutoffs of each indicator. And but also with respect uh, with the, uh, to the K cutoff, as uh, Professor Foster presented uh, for um, other studies. And as Sabina also presented, we also analyzed whether the group we were identifying as poor was overlapping and to what extent to the income poor and the wealth poor by um, DHS. That's um, a bit of what Sabina presented, but uh, we also did more, more work on that. Um, so, with respect to changes in the indicators cutoffs and in the indica indicators themselves, this is just um, an example. In the reported measure, we use underweight as the nutritional measure for children. But we also calculating use, calculated the MPI using weight for height and height for age, so wasting and stunting rather than underweight. Um, and of course the MPI varies, the, the estimates varies. In general we see that when we use stunting the MPI tends to be higher. But the question is not so much whether the value itself varies but whether the ranking of, cha of countries changes. So we just perform some basic correlations between those different rankings of, of countries and we actually found that uh, the correlations are pretty high are above uh, 0 0.87 with three different uh, correlation coefficients. Of course, this is still a basic uh, robustness check. We are aware of, what, of that. Um, another example is that, as Sabina said, we used uh, mor the mortality indicator is not age restricted because MIX and WHS does not have um, a childbirth record. Uh, record, but so what we did is that with the DHS uh, countries we had, we estimated using um, mortality whether there had been a, a child death of under five years of age. And again, we calculated the correlations of the of the rankings, and again, we found that this is quite high. Um, as the second robustness. Um, exploration, we try with different k-values. Of course, not all k-values are look relevant because, uh, for example, for k higher than 4, no, that is requiring to be deprived in over 40% of the weighted indicators, many, many countries get a value of uh, MPI equal to 0. Um, so uh, it, 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 it becomes a bit less relevant and also because our the indicators cutoffs we are using are quite mild or quite low requirements. So uh, in analyzing, we think that a K range between two and four, between, namely between 20% and 40% makes more sense. Okay, so this is just an example with six countries and the graph um, says that no, in, in that range and actually in, in a broader range too, Nigeria is always poorer than, Ethio than Ethiopia, which is poorer than Mali, than um, Burkina, than Guinea, and then uh, Sierra Leone. So there is some sort of, of dominance within 
those countries. And we did this for the whole set of countries. 